let's go a little bit slowly through the research that you then did. It sounds to me as though it was almost an immediate attraction as far as your personalities matching. But what about your science? I mean, in this partnership, which becomes quite famous, and I hope we will talk about that in great detail later on, did it become apparent who was going to be doing what? Did you talk about... Well, from the get-go. I mean, that was always the case with my postdocs. I made a point of letting them carve out a place of their own within the context of the lab. I never, ever... The most I did with Harold was to suggest that the one thing that was missing from the lab's effort at the moment was the search for the provirus in the cell. Mm -hmm. And he might think about that. And eventually, that's what he picked up on. And um, he quickly developed, essentially, you know, he was independent from the beginning. He already had postdoctoral experience. And um, we, we fell into this pattern of, <clears throat> um, uh, at first, I was, I was the person people were applying to for postdoctoral fellowships, obviously, because I had already published in the field. Harold had not yet. Uh, but we fell into the pattern of sharing the mentorship of all the postdocs and students in the lab. And they, the lab was growing at a <laughs> considerable rate. Uh, had about, they're, they're, uh, at the point Harold came, Harold, I think, was my third postdoctoral mm -hmm. fellow. You could hardly do better. But anyway, uh, Harold would say I couldn't do better. Um, uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, but the lab started to grow like Topsy. And uh, so we were sharing mentorship of the, of the postdoc.